watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Today, a conversation with Zaka Nawaz about her new TV show about Muslim Canadians. First, some news headlines. Indigenous cultural site built after 15 years of planning. Olive Tree Foundation grants $100,000 towards supporting victims of Islamophobia. Canadians say that race relations are getting worse. Muslims in California take FBI to the Supreme Court after 10 years. The Canadian Embassy downsized in Ethiopia as conflict escalates. And now some details. Construction will soon begin on Kichi Aski, a 4.5 hectare lot that will be the cultural site of the local Indigenous community in Edmonton. The development process has taken over 15 years. According to the CBC, project manager Louis Cardinal says until now, Indigenous people had to leave town to do their sacred ceremonies, unlike those who could go to a cathedral, mosque or temple. He also said that the site will be a place for people to learn about Indigenous culture. The Olive Tree Foundation awarded a grant of $100,000 to the Al Rashid Mosque in Edmonton. The grant will fund the Victims Assistance Pilot Program, which intends to support victims suffering from physical and psychological trauma due to Islamophobic attacks. The National Council of Canadian Muslims will work with Al Rashid Mosque and the Olive Tree Foundation in this pilot project to ensure that the victims of Islamophobia are supported. The Canadian Race Relations Foundation and the Environics Institute for Survey Research have released a report indicating that there is increased pessimism around race relations progress in Canada. The percentage of people that believe that race relations in Canada are generally good is lower than the percentage in 2019. Nearly half of Indigenous and Black Canadians describe race relations as generally not good. Mohammed Hashim, executive director of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, said that people are more aware of systemic racism in Canada, yet progress to address these inequalities has been slow. The trial against the Federal Bureau of Investigation launched by Muslims in Orange County, California, began today in Washington's Supreme Court. The plaintiffs are Muslim, Muslim mosque attendees from California who claim that the FBI collected their information and recorded their conversations, violating the First Amendment on religious freedom. The FBI is arguing that further proceedings on the case should be halted to protect classified information. The case reached the Supreme Court a decade after Muslims in California first filed the lawsuit in 2011. In a statement made by Global Affairs Canada yesterday, Canada will withdraw family members of diplomats and non-essential staff from embassy, from the embassy in Ethiopia. The embassy in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, will remain open. The statement comes as conditions in Ethiopia worth, worsen, with increased attacks on civilians and humanitarian personnel. Canada also condemned the violations of human rights and international law and called for a ceasefire. Ethiopia has seen conflict for over a year between the military forces of the Tigray People's Liberation Front and the state under Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Thousands have been killed or forced to flee. That's it for the news and now our conversation about with Zaka Nawaz about her new TV comedy series named Zaka. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, Salam. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Now, you're about to launch on CBC Gem, a new TV show. Tell us about, uh, tell us about it. It's about, um, a, this is not autobiographical for everyone out there, because my husband has asked me many times to tell everyone this, completely made up. Uh, it's about a bitter, vindictive Muslim woman who finds out on Facebook that her ex-husband is marrying a white yoga instructor half her age. So she impulsively tells everyone that she too will be coming to this wedding with her date, a white brain surgeon named Brian, and she has no 
date <laughs> with this person. It's completely made up. And it's a comedy about how she now must go out and find this person and uh, use him as her revenge fantasy date. So you 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 said, oh, your husband's asking you to make sure that people know it's not autobiographical. But if that's true, why are you calling it Zaka? Like, this, this is, is a good question, Dan. This, this is a very good question. Because I think that um, my intention was to make a show in – in the spirit of stand-up comedians who, who make shows up with their first names, like Jerry Seinfeld, Everyone Loves Raymond. So I was doing stand-up for about six months. My, and my intention was to do stand-up for several years and build up a following and a skill set and then launch a show. But then the pandemic happened and it just ended everything. And suddenly this opportunity to make the show happen and it had to be not exactly based on my life. So it had to be sort of a new concept and so I thought, okay, divorce was a concept that I thought was really interesting because Muslim women also go through the same issues as other women do when it comes to, um, you know, feeling jealous or insecure or devalued after a divorce. And I thought this would be a really interesting opportunity to explore that avenue. But in the spirit of um, following, you know, stand-ups, shows are usually named after them. So my producers were like, we have to name it Zarka because it, you have a very unique name <laughs> and it's hard to find show names that are unique. So then I just sort of, and I kept thinking, oh, oh I'll change it eventually. This isn't going to happen. And, but then things happen so quickly and it, the name stuck. <laughs> and then, and then my husband, all these emails started coming, telling my husband and myself how sorry they were <laughs> about the demise of our, our relationship. So I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> So I have been telling everyone everything's fine. Alhamdulillah, we are married. The kids are fine. Everything's alhamdulillah, fine. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> uh, so you uh, you've said that you think that was was this? Okay, let me start again. I I, I know that after your famous a little mosque on the prairie show, which uh, which was very you know well received and it was extended into good seasons good number of seasons and then there was sort of like okay what i'm going to do next what i'm going to do next and then you, you know you did the memoir but i understand that it's not very easy to pitch a show uh because there's yeah. so much competition and you had tried a couple of times maybe even in the u.s was this particular one then hard to pitch to cbc how did you get them to pick it up this was it was very challenging after Little Mosque on the Prairie. Everyone thinks you're immediately going to be able to make a second show, but that's not true. It's a very, very competitive environment, partly because it's such an expensive process. Every episode of Little Mosque, you know, was almost a million dollars. And, you know, broadcasters are very reticent to brought to green light shows very easily. And there's so much competition. And, you know, and plus that, you know, they wanted to give other um, people a chance and other minorities a chance. And so I was out in LA pitching for a long time, trying to make a, a, a trying to get a Muslim comedy off the ground, and it wasn't working. And it's you know it's just the way the nature of the business. And mm -hmm. so I thought, well, I'm a really good comedy writer, and I love story. So instead of the keep banging on the same window that's not opening, I went sideways and decided to write a memoir because that mm -hmm. way I could keep the stories about Muslim life alive and have something you know that I could show for myself that I'm still doing so I wrote their memoir then I started a novel and while I was working on the novel um I, I got an opportunity to do the short form web series so short form meaning six episodes about 11 minutes each and then I pitched it to CBC and because of my relationship with them with Little Moss on the Prairie mm. because it's a different team that works for the short form mm. they said yeah this seems like a really great idea we'd like to uh license it even though typically CBC Gem is more focused on why why young people um does why tv i think not why tv like younger younger models we're looking mm -hmm. for shows for younger audiences but they said but in this case you know we'll make an exception for you because you are such a well-known entity at cbc so i was really fortunate to sort of sneak into the door and be able to sort of revive my television career so the hope is that we'll air sometime may or june of 2022 and that we can use it as a proof of concept for a half hour. So we're hoping either CBC or another Canadian broadcaster or an American streamer will look at it and say, yeah, we like this concept, but we think it has a lot of promise. And I, have a, I have a bit of a problem with this idea that, which you said, oh, you know, they did one ethnic group and now they have to sort of be fair and do other ethnic groups. And that was one of the reasons you had trouble pitching shows. I mean, it's not as if there aren't lots of, you know, white people shows with different themes. Uh -huh. uh, what, why, exactly. do we, why do we only get one? <laughs> No, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you that's the exact reason I was, I, I'm guessing, right? Because I don't know why. They never actually said that out loud. Mm. Uh, but you're right. Like, I mean, white people have a lot of white shows. Mm. And I think 
that there's been a lot of um, reflection in the media about this subject, about why, you know, why is it that we have so few shows that are diverse in the media? And I feel like we're starting to see change happening with executives because the gatekeepers are still white. Mm. All the gatekeepers who green light all the shows. Whenever I'd go to pitch, it's a very white world in the network world. Right. And people pick shows that resonate with them and and what things resonate with them is their own race. So right. we run into that issue and we need structural systemic change um, where the gatekeepers are and the people who make those decisions for sure. Well, this one you said is going to be focused on divorce in the Muslim community, which is obviously a hugely taboo topic, especially for Muslim women. Do you think there's going to be a bit of a backlash? Uh, this, you, you had a bit of a backlash after the first season of Little Mosque you've talked about. Do you think there's going to be some kind of similar experience this time? I think so. I mean, I feel that the Muslim community has grown and evolved and become much more sophisticated when it comes to media. People are really surprised when I tell them that they had a that the Muslim community had a really hard time when Little Mosque and the Prairie first came out hmm. because they couldn't they can't imagine it today that but Muslims did. It was the first time it came out. They weren't. They wanted a depiction of Muslims that were perfect. They didn't make any mistakes. Every Muslim was wonderful. Was helping all the neighbors, and they felt like you know having Babur there as the foil and him making mistakes that was representational of their community. I'm like, well, people do make mistakes, and Muslims are under the impression that if we, if we show the mistakes, and people won't like us. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the opposite happened. It showed the humanity and you know, universality of our experiences. That we have the same issues everyone else does. And in fact, help people bond with the Muslim community. And I think the same thing will happen with this show. I'm already getting, you know, criticism. Oh, we like the little mosque better. Oh dear, <laughs> are you doing this? And I'm like, you know what? Like, no one. You can't make everyone happy. And now shows like Rami, Lady mm -hmm. Parts are coming out, um, and they're showing different aspects of the Muslim community. And we're not a monolithic group. Right. Different parts. Do well, you think that's what feels? Is that the for you the the value added, like the gap that it's filling in terms of representation of Muslims on TV? Yeah, I feel like we've never we don't we hardly see Muslim women stories on television. Like they're mm -hmm. so limited to like the wife of the terrorist or the victim, you know, um, abuse. And we, but we don't see the rest of the spectrum of our of our lived experience. And I'm hoping to start filling that in with this experience of. And Muslim women aren't always the nicest people. Right? <laughs> I'm playing a very terrible person, Kathy. I have to tell you, I'm not a good person oh dear. on this show. And but I think that 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 reflects a wide part of our lives and our personalities. And I think people say, oh my God, she reminds me of this person or she reminds me of that person. And then they feel connected to you. Right. And was it hard for you to make the tr transition from behind the camera to in front? I mean, I know that in some of your short films early, early on, you were also an actor or an actress, but was was that a difficult transition for you? Yeah, it was. I, I Just like calling it my name, I just somehow thought in the back of my mind, well, you know, somebody eventually will say no. Mm. not you you're mm. not an actor no one did um probably because it was short form and there's it was fairly low stakes and my producers just sort of believed in me they just said we think you can do it and so the funders were like that's fine but we expect her to start taking acting classes so I was in very intense acting classes for a year and a half going over the scripts and rehearsing one of our directors was an acting coach uh, Liz Whitmere and so she was helping and so it's like anything, the more you do it, it's a muscle, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And we we cast very, a very strong team around myself, which helped mm. immensely, because when you act with very strong actors, it brings up your level as well. So there's been a lot of preparation. Well, we wish you well, we have to leave it there, but thank you very much for coming on the show and we hope it's a smash hit. Thank you so much, Kathy. You've been watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay safe and God bless.